So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest for this evening. Uh, I met this young man back in 2005, and I tell you, I've watched him grow from an own, unknown songwriter to uh, an in-demand songwriter in the music industry today. And he works with everyone from Miley Cyrus to Kesha, to Jason Derulo, Fantasia, Michael Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my friend Claude Studio Peace Play. I know I could write songs like I do now when I first started. I was um, always involved in music. I started playing piano like at two and a half or three and was playing piano classically all the way through grade school and high school and played the flute, sang in choir, sang in church, but never really, never was, I wasn't even aware that songwriting was a career. Like I worked with a lot of people in New York. I worked with um, a lot of different producers and writers that I learned a little bit from each about you know writing and simplifying things in different styles, so I can't really attribute it to one person, but I definitely, I'm a sponge, I still learn. It's always about that artist. So that, I never go in there and psych myself out by saying I'm going in here to work with an R&B artist, therefore the song should sound like this because it's R&B. Um, I don't believe in like, in rules or, um, or boxes in that, in that sense. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's personal experiences and sometimes if it's a new artist where they don't have a lot of artistic um, like a long history of art, like as an artist, it'll be like how they feel that day. Or um, sometimes as simple as, look, I have an album done, we're looking for one more song, and we've said this, 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 and this, but we haven't said this. Absolutely. So let's write a song about, I miss you. Because they've said, I'm in a club, and I love you, and <laughs> I hate you, and so we need a song about missing someone. That's, sometimes it's that. But I think the best songs come from when it's really, really about the artist's personal life because then when they're performing it, there's a more there's, there's definitely a, a more personal connection and they feel more inclined to keep the song because they love it. <laughs> a lot of times songwriters mistake mistake their job and think that they're the star of the show. If you're in the studio to write a song for an artist, your job is to make that artist look as good as possible and make them sound as good as possible and get their point of view across the way they would, not what you would do, what they would do. Anyone who's in the, anyone who's here who's in love with music, technically what we're doing is we're chasing the goosebumps. So the first time you heard a song, two or two or two years old or 22 or 42, and you heard a song and it gave you like it made the, the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. Mm -hmm. The reason we keep buying songs and keep trying to write and trying to beat ourselves is because you're chasing that feeling. The ones that we love the most by any artist of any genre are the ones that for some reason you feel like you can relate to on a more honest level and then it just be then just sounding good. It has to be something in the music and in the lyrics that makes you feel like it's hitting you below the belt. <coughs> and that's what I'm that's what that's the only thing that dictates dictate how I write the songs. I can't really worry about the charts because I still don't really understand them. <laughs> so real talk. So pretty much it just stay true to the to yourself and, and Right. If you're chasing the charts, it's gonna go go crazy. Because there's no telling why a song may may or may not do well. When I first came out of college and I was figuring out, I remember I spent a lot of time in this producer named Troy Taylor's basement, and he whooped my butt. Like he would make me just like write songs over and over and over again. And the thing is, he was lying at the time, and I was so pissed about it at the time. But now I look back and I'm glad he did it. He'd say, "I need a song for Patti LaBelle." And I said, okay. And so I'd go down there and I'd do my homework and I'd write a song. And then he would lead me down there. He'd get mad because I could sing. And if I was taking too long, he'd say, you know what? You're taking too long. I don't have patience for this. Figure it out yourself. And he'd make me record myself, write it all by myself, which I was so angry about. Then he would like, he would open the door, listen from the top of the stairs, and say, ah, I don't like it. The song's good, but then what for Brandy? And I have to re-sing the whole song and rearrange it so they sound like a brand new record. Then he made me do it again for Whitney Houston, and do it again for Mary J. Blige, and do it again. And I'd be down there till three, four in the morning, pissed. <laughs> but in the end, it's like it, taught, it, yeah, it taught me how to like be versatile. You have to be fearless. Because to be a songwriter means that you have, you have to be not about self, you have to be about somebody else. And there are lots of times, I was I just said this a few days ago, that. I've been in studios, and if you want a song on Britney Spears or Kelly Clarkson or whatever, and 
you're a singer and there's no one, you can't afford to pay for someone to demo it, then you have to get over yourself and sing it like a girl. And be Britney Spears. You have to be a 27-year-old white girl from Louisiana and sing it like her with her accent and, uh, and just like, you know, change your voice and do all the stuff that it takes. I mean, there's many demos out there and lots of people have heard me imitate people in the studio, but it gets the point across and they know what I'm talking about. Because I'm not afraid to be a complete jackass in the studio if it means that it's going to, when they, when they hear it, they can hear themselves doing it. The music industry is, is no different than any other industry in that the people who make it are not necessarily the most talented all the time, but the people who wanted it the most. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, attitude is a big thing. Attitude, first of all, let me just say this. In the music industry, more than anything else, more than your talent or anything, your relationships mean the most. Mm -hmm. And attitude makes and breaks a lot of business. What kills a lot of songwriters, up and coming ones especially, is their attitude. And, and a lot of them will come to you and say, well, I have this song and it's hot. And just the, just the way they approach you is off-putting. Because it's like, I got that hot shit. You ain't listen to this right now. <laughs> this, this, this is going to be the next hit. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, and then they don't want to hear the criticism. Or they don't want the, they're not ready to hear that it's not as hot as they thought it was. So usually someone who's kind of humble and says, like, you know, I, I would love you to listen to my record or... Uh, take a listen to this. That's, those are the ones I often click. Like if I get a link from on Twitter, I was in the studio in one of my many um, relentless sessions, and Wardell showed up. I don't even know what you were there for. What were you there for? Oh my lord! To see to see an artist, yeah, to see an artist who uh, who was what I was for at the time. And he's like, you're good. I was like, thank you. And he was yeah, like, yeah, this song that I thought was dope from Mario. It was, it was called that love song. Uh -huh. I remember. And uh, he was, and he, uh, he, um, he's like, I'm bringing you to BMI. And I was kind of like, okay, well, ASCAP isn't doing anything for me. And <laughs> fine. And and for me, it was a relationship. It was, it was about being with someone who, my, my whole thing was, I don't care what company I'm with, as long as there's someone there who believes in me and will champion for me. And Wardell was extremely passionate at the time and was like, you're good. I want to hear everything you got. Make send me all. Make me manager. He's like send me all his songs. I want to hear what you, what he's doing. And kept in touch with me every single step of the way. And you know was always you know keeping tabs on my work and making sure that I was taken care of. And that's really why I'm still with BMI and why I uh, probably always will be. I got a call saying you know getting ready to work on Britney Spears. Why don't you you know try your hand in it? So on the flight back to LA a few weeks later, I was like nervous and trying to bring something like okay I gotta I got one shot I gotta nail this song and what can I talk about and of course this is at the end this is at the end of her like lots of publicity and drama and, and breakdown or whatever you want to call it and I was trying to figure out a cool way to discuss without talk talk about it without talking about it mm -hmm. so I was like well circus and that, that, the title came to me and I, I actually didn't like it because I was like there's no way to make circus sound good in a song there's no way to sing the word circus and make it sound good then they're like, she likes it, she wants to cut it. I'm like, okay. And so we came back and I cut the vocal on her and I was like, this is cool. And that's that's the first song that I saw. Frankie J was the first song I saw go all the way through, but that Circus was the first song I really saw. It was the first hit, obviously, but also it was the first song that I really saw the impact of what um, a, a major artist and a major song could do. Um, it, it went from being a song that she liked to a song she cut to the title of the album mm -hmm. to the concept of the tour yeah. to um, the video with the elephants and the lions and all that stuff. I was like, I don't even know if people spent money on videos like that. <laughs> it was so awesome. And then I, I, we saw the tour and to watch her perform this song that, that was the first time I saw like a song, like, this yeah. idea I had on the plane become this record that was like a tour built around it. Mm -hmm. So like literally last week I was in doing reading and saw the circus perfume. <laughs> <laughs>